Hello guys, it's been a while and glad I'm back. Uh, hope you're gonna enjoy the following game because there is a very, uh, very funny story about it. Uh, I was in a cafe, I was just drinking some coffee and juices with my friends and uh, while we were just having fun, I decided to play um, an online blitz game. Lately, I don't play uh, that good anymore. I don't know why, probably lack of motivation. But the following game, <clears throat> I played on a really GM level with a couple of brilliances and a couple of fantastic and very unexpected original moves. Also, theoretically speaking, it was from my favorite opening and uh, course from Chasuble uh, Butcher the Sicilian. So, hope you're going to enjoy the following game. Let's get started. I was white. I opened up the game with e4. My opponent went for c5. By the way, uh, my opponent was Turkish FM. Uh, rated online 26 20. So after like e4 c5, I played knight c3, knight c6, and you know this one, I called it Azeri variation or Tiviakov's variation, or simply it's called an old sites traditional variation in the Sicilian defense. It's one of the main uh, assets, I'd say, of the butcher, the Sicilian course. You just want to take on c6, and that's why all good players usually just jump with the knight on d4. Then you play knight f3, that's considered to be the best continuation for white, and my opponent went for the most common and uh, most, I'd say, popular uh, choice by black against the whole butcher, the Sicilian course. So after he went for e6, I played logical move castles, and he went for a6. This is the first important position, because there is a very important question, where should we bring the bishop back? We should bring it back to d3. Why do we uh, bring the bishop back to d3? There is a very special reason for this, because having the bishop on d3, you basically uh, block the knight on d4, and you basically block the pawn on d4. And now you're probably wondering, what the hell is this guy talking about? He's, he's just blocked the pawn on e4, and we're never supposed to explain to any of our students to bring the bishop back to d3. Well, at first glance, that's the way it is. But you actually want to take on d4, want to bring the knight back on e2, in which case you would go after the weak pawn on d4 and the bishop on d3 would block that pawn as a weakness. So afterwards, when you take on d4, bring your knight back on e2, you just play b3 and play bishop to b2. My opponent in this position played knight f6. One of the most popular moves is knight c6. And you can check uh, other videos on my channel or you can just get the course and find how did I solve this uh, with b3 or with a3 in some other videos. Anyways, uh, my opponent went for less popular knight f6. To be honest with you, I don't like knight f6. Simply, I don't like it because it gives me a very important tempo move e5. I always enjoy in these e5 moves, in this type of games. Simply, it gives me a precious time uh, and possibility to play in the center. When I kick his knight away with knight f6, he uh, took on f3. Once again, I just have to say that I find it pretty suspicious, uh, but he can play knight d5. Simply I take, and when they take on d5, look at these terrible pawns. All you have to do is just play b3, bishop b2, and win the pawn on d4. Uh, of course, my opponent didn't like that knight g8 to bring the bishop back. So after like knight takes f3, queen takes f3, he brought a knight back all the way to g8. And when he brought a knight back to g8, I played rook e1, over supporting the pawn on e5, uh, developing my rook, and at some point just kind of centralizing my pieces, I'd say like that. He went for knight e7. Here I started to play nice, here I started to kind of like my game and what I was actually doing in this game. Uh, I played very originally. And I plead, that's what I'm telling you, please, you don't always have to follow these. Lately, I have a feeling that we all are kind of fed up and a little bit, you know, like, um, uh, a little bit bored and a little bit confused with all these engine moves and analysis. 
and uh, I vote for creativity. I vote for uh, sacrifices. I vote for interesting ideas. You don't have to play, and when you, especially when you do those reviews on chess.com, you don't have to say like, "Am I going to play the best move according to the engine?" If it's brilliant, it's fantastic. Great move, it's great. But if 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 you're just looking all the time for the best engine moves, you you won't be able to. I don't know, get a game like this one on the board. For example, the move that I just played, engine finds okay, but it certainly doesn't find one of the best ones. So it was B4. I played B4, kind of doing some sort of win gambit against the Sicilian. And when I played this B4, I'm just, uh, just like you see, uh, provoking him to take. Uh, in fact, uh, the main idea behind B4 is to be able to go and jump with the knight on e4 with tempo while at the same time I won't have any problems with bringing my bishop on b2 and supporting the pawn on e5 and even more than that supporting some sacrifices afterwards so my opponent after b4 played knight c6 which was obviously a mistake he was supposed to accept the sacrifice I would jump on e4 with tempo now you would say but why with tempo? Wouldn't you able to jump here as well in previous line? Well, you can do it. But when he plays knight c6, now you don't have bishop b2 to defend the pawn. And when I play bishop b2 to defend the pawn, I'm also going to have knight f6 or knight e6 to launch the attack on the king side. So uh, here I played b4, he captured, I played, I captured, uh, he captured, and I brought my knight on e4. A very lovely continuation. This is probably one of the um, crucial moments where I just had to calculate something. I remember because I was just drinking coffee and uh, playing on my um, uh, mobile phone. Uh, I was just, uh, I just had to, uh, you know, like think for like 10 15 seconds and to see what's happening after 95. And I saw if 95, I would play queen g3. I know these ideas from some French positions or some Sicilians. When he takes, because two pieces are hanging, knight on e5 and pawn on g7. I take on g7. I'm threatening his uh, rook on a8. When he goes and takes on e1, I just go with queen a8. I just give check and I just go with bishop a3. I assess this position absolutely lovely because I have zillions of threats in this position. Uh, and on top of all that, uh, I'm also threatening to get the material back. Uh, with all his pieces being on the back rank and on the back row, Simply, I just realized I should be not winning, but the mate should be somewhere around. So after I played knight e4, he brought the bishop back to e7. I played my favorite bishop b2. And guys, believe it or not, the b4 idea, bringing the bishop back, actually bringing the bishop on b2 square, decided this game. You'll see why. So I played bishop b2 and he played castles. Da -da -da -da. It's puzzle time, so I'm going to give you some time, pause the video, and try to find the brilliancy by white. Congratulations to all of you who said, boom, knight f6. What a fantastic sacrifice. So what was my initial point? If he captures by pawn, I recapture, and now take a look at the bishop on b2 it supports the mate next move queen g4 or queen g3 or even queen h5 in some lines and the mate was inevitable my opponent captured by bishop so i recaptured by pawn can you imagine how big triumph you actually feel during the game you jump on f6 you sacrifice a piece and out of everything and out of all these options your opponent decides to take by bishop i mean it sucks so i mean for him for us it's beautiful so i just captured an f6 and he played g6 now i said okay i'm having the bishop here i'm having this monster on b2 that supports another monster on f6 and all i need is my queen on h6 so i went with a pretty primitive queen h3 i could have gone with queen f4 which would be pretty much the same and he says okay buddy but i'll play e5 I just want to take by queen on e5. And there we go. Once again, pause the video and find the move. This time, not a brilliancy. This time, not a uh, such a great move in terms of finding and winning some material. But 
how to carry on with initiative. Here, I played an amazing move, Rook takes e5. Whoever came up with this idea, congratulations to you guys. So I played Rook takes e5, and my opponent played Queen takes f6. I was very happy when I saw that, because when I played Rook e5, my initial point was, let me just defend the pawn on uh, f6, and all I want to do is Queen h6 with Queen g7. He cannot even defend checkmate like this with, with this move, because I can just include my rook into the action, and here I can play queen h7 followed by rook h3 mate. So initial point of rook e5 was to have like better protector of the pawn on f6. So when he took on f6, I felt uh, very happy about that. So I just played another great move, rook b5. Rook b5, I'm threatening his queen on f6, and I'm opening these two monstrously strong bishops. At the same time, I keep my rook on the fifth rank. And now you're probably wondering, why do I keep rook on the fifth rank? Why do I talk about this bishop pair and everything else? In previously, I said I played pretty, pretty primitive queen h3. And now all of a sudden that queen is going to pay off. My opponent played queen e7. And guess what? pause the video and find another brilliance in this game uh, congratulations guys I guess most of you found it and congratulations for that Queen takes h7 and if he resigned of course if he captures check buddy take a look at the power of the bishop pair he can't take it because King would be under the attack he had to brought it back and I, I would I would have gone with rook h8 and win this game. What can I say? It's been a while, uh, so many obligations lately. Um, now I'm gonna take my son to World Youth under 10 in Egypt. After that, I carry on with more of these opening lectures. Uh, hope you enjoyed the game and subscribe, sometimes donate and tell your friends about the channel. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.